Today we're going to be going over the disassembly of a watercraft carburetor. This is a 38 millimeter Makuni carb from a 1995 HX. So you see there, just removing the bolts that retain it down into the engine, removing a couple of the clips from the fuel lines. We're going to remove these clip style clamps and remove these fuel lines. So that can be achieved. Um, by just inserting a pick in between the clip portion and wiggling it out you'll hear it click loose and then the clip is released uh, they are reusable you can go to a crimp style clamp uh, these are the factory clamps that were used uh, all these fuel lines will be replaced these are the old gray fuel lines they have a tendency to break down over time and clog fuel filters clog jets uh, rendering the ski catatonic more or less. You'll see just prying that clip up releases with a nice click slide that out of the way and then we're just going to gently make sure these fuel lines are loose give them a quick twist with the pliers uh, just very gentle making sure we don't damage any of the fuel nipples on the carburetor so those are all pressed in. If those get damaged that will mean the carburetor has to be replaced. So there's one that will go in the trash bin. This one, the Y fitting you see there will get reused after it's cleaned out. So we'll just remove this from the carburetor so we can free up some working space. And we'll peel off the flange gasket. That's the one between the engine and the carburetor just doing a quick overall inspection plucking off some more crud these carbs are going to be pretty dirty on the inside you're going to see a lot of rust a lot of gunk in there next step is going to be to remove the eight outside cover screws tried hitting them with the regular screwdriver at first uh, just a little too tight so we're going to have to go to the impact driver uh, the other carb was already disassembled and I've started the cleaning procedure on that one so I had a feeling this one was going to do very much the same so just a quick tap with the impact driver will loosen up all these screws and they'll be able to finish removing them by hand And then we'll move to the other side, do the same to these four screws. And you'll notice I'm not hitting them, hitting the impact driver really hard. Uh, these aren't too bad to remove. You don't have to go really hard. Uh, I've also put a block of wood underneath it to try and support the other side of the bottom side of the carb there try and avoid any damage so now that all, all of those have been broken loose we can put the block of wood to the side and remove the rest remove the screws the rest of the way So these two screws not only retain the diaphragm cover on one side, but also that plate that retains the oil cable. So we'll finish removing those, and then in the upper left-hand corner is going to be a little tang that's going to allow us to pry up that cover just gently. Put those screws back where they originally came from. So we want to assemble it the exact same way it came apart and keep that together for the time being. 
So now you'll see this diaphragm. This will get replaced as part of the rebuilding and cleaning process. So if it tears, not a big deal. And now you can see a lot of the junk, rust, and debris that has accumulated over the years. These skis were sitting for some time uh, before they came into my possession. So you can see a lot of it is loose. Um, a lot of it will have to be cleaned up. We'll use a soft wire brush and a combination of carb cleaning solvents to get this all clean. But before we can do that, we've got to wipe everything down as, we, as best we can and get all the components out of the carb. So we'll just flip it over, drain any remaining you could call it fuel I guess out of there give it a quick wipe down remove some of the dirt and grime and then we'll flip it over remove this side cover as well And here I'm just highlighting the different inlets and outlets. So you'll see they correspond on the cover. So on the left here we have an inlet going in and the right outlet. We'll gently remove this cover, just rock it out of its place. keep those screws where they came from and set that off to the side. Now this is the little pencil tip eraser filter that we're going to pull out here. This is going to be absolutely clogged. So this is going to not allow any fuel to get into the carb. So the engine is not going to be able to get any fuel to this cylinder thus not run that's not going to get cleaned, it will get replaced as part of the new rebuild kit. Same thing with this o-ring, just pluck it out, uh, it's going to be swollen so it may have to be peeled out with a pick as I had to. Just want to be careful not to damage the body of the carburetor. That's going to be about it for that side. So now we're going to go back to this other side Now we're going to go back to the impact driver and a couple screws on this plate that are going to be stubborn. We're just going to have to give them a couple light taps of the impact driver to break those free. And that's going to expose the jets underneath it. Now that those are loose, we'll finish removing the screws by hand. And then we're just going to gently work that plate free, and then we'll flip it over and just drop it up right out of the carburetor body. So now that's out. Have the two screws. Those will get cleaned up, reused. And you see this little retaining plate that covers the jets, just showing you which way it goes in. On the underside, there's a little one-way check valve. It's a little clear plastic piece, and that's retained with that screw. And set that off to the side. Underneath that plate, there's going to be this little gasket. I'm going to pluck that out. Set that off to the side. And here I'm just going to highlight the high speed jet and the low speed jet down in that orifice, the needle and seat assembly, 
the pin which is captured by that screw there. We're going to go ahead and remove that now. And these aren't too bad to remove. They do have a washer underneath them and then just hold that needle uh, arm down so it doesn't fly. There is a spring underneath there that you do not want to lose that will get reused. The spring in the rebuild kits uh, is usually of a different tension and you want to maintain the same tension make sure it's set properly. So we'll just slide that out. You can see that lever arm just has that sliding pin there. And here's that spring I mentioned that's going to control the pop-off pressure for the carburetor that will get reused. And now we'll just pluck out the needle. It's almost on a little hanger there. And it's got a little tip on it. You want to make sure that's not grooved. Uh, as long as it's in good condition, that can be reused. And then the seat assembly here is going to be retained by this little arm and screw. So once again, not too bad to remove. It does have a washer on it. We'll go ahead and break that free, remove that, remove that little retaining arm, and then we'll be able to remove the seat assembly. And this is the little retainer that holds the seat in place. And there's the seat, which we'll go ahead and take out. Um, they really don't want to do what I'm about to do. I actually get in there with a pick. Um, you definitely don't want to get into the lower surfaces where that needle actually seats into the very bottom of it. If you score that up, you can cause a fuel leak and it's not going to work properly. What you want to do is grab a pair of needle nose pliers and gently wiggle it out. You don't want to use a lot of pressure. Uh, it is soft and you can damage it. And it'll just pluck right out. It does have an O-ring on it. And then this particular needle and seat assembly is a 1.2. You can find needles and seats in various sizes that allow you to tune. Uh, for different setups, whether you're modified or you're just changing your uh, pop-off pressure. That's done in conjunction with needle and seat and then the pop-off spring. So now we're going to remove the high-speed jet. Uh, this screwdriver first attempted, felt it to slip right about here. Um, so we're going to go to something with a little bit broader of a head. So we don't want to damage the jet. Those are reusable. Uh, and when those are cleaned, um, you want to make sure you don't run anything through there that's going to open up the size of the jet. So here those just click loose. Remove that. And there's the high speed jet. Bigger of the jet is always the high speed. And then the low speed is going to be further into the body. For removal of the low speed jet, you want to take a little screw old flat blade screwdriver like I'm going to pick up in a second here once I figure out it's in front of my face. Um, you shave down the edges so it's just wide enough to get inside that orifice so you can remove the low speed jet. And just dump that into your hand. There you can see the low speed jet does have a very, very small opening. So that's your metering orifice for idle and just off idle. And that's just about everything inside the carburetor. We've removed all the jets, we've removed the needle and seat, we've removed that block. So everything on that side is removed. And we'll give it one more quick wipe down before we move over to the next step.
Just showing you some more of the gunk that's in these old carburetors. So the next step is going to be removing the, uh, the the adjustment needles. Okay, so here is the low speed screw. Now you always want to turn these in until they lightly seat and count the number of turns in. That's going to give you a good baseline. Uh, if they were in good running order, uh, that's where you want to start your tuning process at. If you aren't able to look up and find what the specifications for yours are. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And then all of these adjustment screws have a very fine tip. Um, and then there are a couple extra parts on there. There's an O-ring, a washer, and a spring which need to be put on that adjustment screw in that order. So you can see I'm just going to fight and trying to remove this o-ring. So I can show you here. In the proper order, as you can see, is the o-ring on the far outside, followed up by the washer, and then the spring on the adjustment screw. that comes off and I'm going to lay them out in order o-ring washer spring and adjustment screw there And just gently put that all back together for now until we're ready to reassemble and put new o-ring on there. And then we'll go to the other side of the carburetor body from the low speed and you're going to find the high speed jet. From the factory these are capped off which limits the amount you can open them up. As you can see now I'll be trying to open that up and it's going to stop. So there's this little cap on there from the factory. You just pluck that off and now you can remove that high speed jet for cleaning. That plastic cap will not be put back on. It's not necessary. That's just a factory piece to prevent you from over uh, over enriching the high speed side. Most of the high speed screws are going to be almost all the way closed or just a little bit open. And it's going to be very much the same as the low speed screw. Uh, the big differentiation you can see between them, uh, that low speed screw had the little T-bar on it for a little bit more ease of adjustment. This high speed does not. And the order of the parts is exactly the same. So you have the needle, the spring, the washer, and the O-ring in that order. Same thing, gently reassemble that. and set it off to the side. And that's going to be about it for disassembly. You'll notice this carburetor does not have a choke plate. It does have a primer set up. The primer inlet you can see highlighted right there and the block off plug there. With that is normally where the choke plate is installed. Primers allow it to start a little bit easier without having to crank so much. Um, you can prime by squirting a little bit of fuel right into the carburetor um, without it having to try and draw from vacuum alone. So I hope this has been informative. Um, we're just going to check out a couple more parts here, diaphragms, uh, gaskets, and whatnot, um, just to kind of show you the condition that these carb, this carb came back in. Um, in part two, we'll probably do a reassembly and rebuilding but the disassembly, the hard part, I think, is all done. Thanks for watching.